Elon Musk is well known for his innovative use of technology. Since he was young, he had an insatiable need to push the boundaries of what's considered impossible. He invented online payment with PayPal, launched the electric vehicle market with Tesla, and basically invented the private space sector with SpaceX. However, you should be aware of his most recent and enormous achievement by now. For as long as Elon Musk has been outspoken about his desire to colonize Mars, he has been working feverishly on his Starship rocket, a large next-generation rocket that he hoped one day will transport humans from Earth to the Moon, and ultimately to Mars. However, he has revealed its jaw-dropping successor, Starship 2.0, a much larger and better rocket. But what is the propellant for these huge and powerful rockets? None other than the SpaceX's new Raptor engine, a methane-fueled full-flow stage combustion cycle engine, and due to its complexity, it gave developers and engineers quite a lot of gray hairs. It was hard to develop. No engine like this has ever flown before. Welcome back to another episode from The Cloud Boss. My name is O'Neill. Please show the channel some love by tapping that like button and of course, subscribe to The Cloud Boss channel and hit that notification bell to stay notified whenever I drop new videos. The Raptor engine is a full-flow stage combustion cycle engine that runs on super-chilled liquid oxygen and super-chilled liquid methane, CH4, both of which will power SpaceX's next-generation vehicle, Starship. The Raptor engine benefits from the highly advantageous full-flow stage combustion cycle, maximizing the impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. It is the third engine of this kind to ever be developed and the first to leave the test stand. The first stage of Starship called Super Heavy will be jam-packed with 33 Raptor engines, 20 non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring, 10 gimbling engines in the middle ring, and 3 gimbling central engines in the innermost ring. This number is expected to decrease in the future as SpaceX further upgrade the Raptor. The second stage, Starship currently hosts 6 total engines three vacuum-optimized non-gimbling engines, and three sea-level gimbling engines. SpaceX CEO and CTO, Elon Musk has noted that in the future, the ship is likely to gain three more vacuum-optimized engines once they increase the length of the ship. Raptor is constructed from SpaceX's proprietary SX-500 alloy copper, aluminum, and steel alloys. There is no information to suggest that these have significantly changed between Raptor 1 and Raptor 2. The engine relies on a small amount of 3D printing. However, SpaceX is trying to remove as much 3D printing as possible due to the inability to scale high cost and low manufacturing rate. At the beginning of 2022, the first Raptor 2 was spotted marking the end of Raptor 1. After Raptor 2 production began, SpaceX stopped producing all Raptor 1.5 engines. Compared to the original Raptor, Raptor 2 looks borderline incomplete. A large amount of plumbing and sensors have been removed. Transitioning the engine from a Christmas tree looked to a significantly cleaner look. On the original version of Raptor, while SpaceX was learning how to control the engine, a very large amount of development sensors were needed, allowing them to track pressure and temperature throughout Raptor's plumbing. Additionally, many valves were combined into valve plates, helping further simplify plumbing. Raptor 1 and Rapture 2 have the exact same nozzle exit diameter, and the rest of the engine has essentially the same dimensions. With that said, Raptor 2 is significantly lighter than Raptor 1, with Raptor 1 having a mass of 2,000 kg and Raptor 2 being 1,600 kg. Raptor 2's MCC pressure is an astounding 300 bar, a 50 bar difference from Raptor 1, the highest MCC pressure of any rocket engine ever. The previous record for the highest MCC pressure was the Russian RB-180, which runs at 267 bar pressure. Due to the wider throat and increased chamber pressure, Raptor has gained a significant amount of thrust. Raptor 1 produced 185 tons of thrust, 
while Raptor 2 produces 230 tons of thrust. The downside though of opening the throat is that it tilled 1% decrease in ISP. Raptor 1 hit roughly 330 seconds of ISP, while Rapture 2 reaches 327 seconds. Despite the decrease in exhaust velocity, the increase in thrust raises the booster's efficiency drastically due to reductions in gravity drag. The first 9.8 meters per second squared of acceleration is spent purely fighting the Earth's gravitational well. If the thrust weight ratio is 1.25 to 1, 80% of the thrust is wasted fighting gravity, and only 20% of the thrust is used to accelerate the vehicle at 0.25 g, despite just a 25% increase, and thrust over a TWR of 1 to 1. This infinitely increases the NET work done on the vehicle, jumping up to a TWR of 1.5 to 167% of the thrust is lost to gravity, and the other 33% performs work on the vehicle, despite only a 16% increase in thrust. This increases the work done on the vehicle by 100%. Raptor 1 would have an approximate time-weighted rate of return of 1.25 at liftoff, while Raptor 2 would have a TWR of 1.5 at liftoff. This 100% increase in work done at the start of the flight is significantly more important than the 1% decrease in ISP. This has many benefits, such as the booster being less far downrange at the end of its burn, decreasing the amount of fuel needed for the booster's backburn. Musk's primary goal is for the cost per ton of thrust of Raptor to be under $1,000. This means Raptor needs to be $250,000 to produce. With this goal, it is clear that SpaceX will continue making Raptor easier to build and cheaper, including removing all flanges on Raptor 2.5 and removing as much 3D printing as possible from the manufacturing sequence. Raptor 2.5 is set to further increase the thrust of Raptor to 250 tons of thrust with an MCC pressure of 330 bar. Additionally, SpaceX is attempting to remove all throat film cooling from the engine. There are several ways that SpaceX could achieve this, including additional head and film cooling or running the MCC more fuel-rich. SpaceX is currently studying if the trade-off of removing throat film cooling would be beneficial. Overall, it is clear that Raptor is currently in its infancy, similar to what SpaceX did with the Merlin engine. The engine will continue to evolve as SpaceX flies more, builds more, and tests more. That about wraps it up for today. Are you just as fascinated like me and want to learn more about the exciting discoveries in space exploration, tech innovations, space travel policies, and interstellar breakthroughs on a regular basis? Then give this video a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and leave gravity behind and join me as I help foster the next generation of explorers. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.